All right, so if you're ready to get an education on dietary fats, I brought with me today the best expert that I can find probably in the world. So stay tuned and get ready to get educated. All right, so thanks for watching everybody. John Meadows here and I'm here with my friend, Dr. Eric Serrano. And Eric for a long time has been trying to educate me on dietary fats. I, um, in my youth, I believed all the myths that fat was bad for you and all these things. And Eric has been educating me for a long time about the value of fats. So we're going to spend a little bit of time today and talk about, um, you know, each kind of fat and just talk about generally what they can do for you and some things to look for. So I want to start with the big bad boy, saturated fat. If I, if, you know, if I eat some saturated fat, I'm going to get hardening of the arteries and have a heart attack. I mean, that's what I've always been taught. So is there some truth to that or? There's absolutely, there's no study ever done that proves that saturated fat causes any type of disease, okay? Now, one belief is that saturated fats make you gain weight. Well, it's not true. It's how, what you eat or what are you adding to those fats or what types of fats they are. Now, if you look at, if you look at anything out there and you say, which one has the highest content of saturated fat? Most people say beef, right. and it's kind of funny because beef is not even close. Right. There's two substances that, that have high, high saturated fat, and I'm talking about 80% or more. Either butter or, actually, or coconut oil. They're the highest content of saturated fat there is. When people talk about lard, most people think lard, you know, and beef tallow. Beef tallow is fat from the beef. Yep. Lard is fat from the pig. They say, oh, that's 100% saturated fat. Actually, they do not know this, that lard is only 48% saturated fat. So for you guys to understand out there, nothing in life has 100% saturated fat. Lard, even though you see that blob of fat, is 48% saturated fat. The rest is mono on saturated fats. So I'm going to tell you right now, if they tell you that, mo that saturated fat causes any heart disease is wrong, I'll be even more worried about something that you're going to be very surprised today is polyunsaturated fats might be the cause of some issues with heart disease. Well, let's talk, okay, so just real quick before we move on from saturated fats. Are saturated fats good to cook with? Absolutely. They're the most stable in heat. Now, I want to say this. Most people will, will buy fats on transparent containers. Please do not do that. Never, ever buy any type of fat, doesn't matter what it is, monopoly, whatever, on a plastic container or in a transparent because as soon as the light, light hits it, it damages those fats. So, for example, coconut oil comes on a plastic container. Yes, you can, you can actually use it, but be aware that some of that plastic leaches into that saturated fat. So I I'm not too happy with saturated fat in plastic containers. Now, a glass container, saturated fat is okay, not as dark, but any mono, any polyunsaturated saturated fat, do not buy it unless it's in a dark container. Okay. So let's say I think a good lesson here. So people ask me all the time, what you know, what do I cook in? So the higher the percent of saturated fat, generally the more stable it is for cooking. So that's a good lesson for what you actually cook with. Now um, let's talk about monounsaturated fats. Now, what are there some health benefits there? Are, you Actually, know, monounsaturated fats are the secret of everything. If you look at the container of beef, if you take a piece of breast, if you take a piece of fish, the content of the monosaturated fat is always higher than the saturated fat. Now, if the animal lives in a cold weather, salmon, the higher content of polyunsaturated fats or fish oils are larger because they got to swim in cold water. If you put cold fat, fat saturated fat on coal, it gets hard. So this animal has to have the flexibility to swim. So that's the only time in nature that you actually can find such a higher content of polyunsaturated fats is because it's necessary to combat the temperature so they can continue moving nicely without any structure um, problems. Now, I will say this, monounsaturated fats are number one, are the most abundant. Monounsaturated fats are the secret for you to gain muscle. Monounsaturated fats are the ones that you wanna use to gain size, gain muscle, and lose weight. Now, does that mean I don't consume other fats? Absolutely not, but monounsaturated fats are the secret for you to gain size. 
So monos, so let's let's talk about some examples. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're thinking olive oil is a good one. Most people think of monosaturated fat, of course, olive oil. And avocado, right? Absolutely. Good... You know, but again, like I said, most people think avocado oil is actually high on saturated fat, believe it or not, MCTs. If I have ah, to I choose, okay. if I have to choose MCTs, most people use coconut oil right, right now because right. they say MCT. By the way, MCT oils are from coconut are liquid because they have separated the saturated fat out of it. That's what they're liquid. But when you have the coconut oil, it's, it's hard because the saturated fat is there. Now, avocado oil is super high on MCT oils. It's very high also on monosaturated fats. Absolutely use those. Now, what is kind of funny is monosaturated fat, if people do not know that, egg has a massive amount of content of monosaturated fats. Now, if you go buy eggs from the store, normal raised eggs, the monosaturated fat content is lower right. and they have sometimes high polyunsaturated fat content, so be aware of that. But eggs are high, or egg yolks, and let me correct that because people are going to say, well, eggs, egg yolks are high on monosaturated fat, avocados are high on monosaturated fat, monosaturated fat olive oil, and, and the biggest ones are nuts, of course. And almost every meat out there is high on monosaturated fat and saturated fats. Yeah. That's, see, that's really interesting because you know, years back I was reading that the you know, red meat did have that high level of monounsaturated fat and it totally, like, man, I had no idea. So what we're talking about here is some red meat, we're talking about avocado, we're talking about egg yolks. These are all really good sources of monounsaturated fats. And then from a health perspective, I wanted to share a story with you guys. Um, I've had, I was having trouble with my HDL, part of my lipid panel, and Eric had me consume six whole eggs a day and I think it was around six tablespoons of olive oil and I started cooking in coconut oil and my HDL went from somewhere in the 20s all the way up to over 60. And that was 68. It was really really good so uh, I think one of the best things and one of the best investments you can make in your health is adding these monounsaturated fats. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk about the one that's left polyunsaturated because you hear they're great and then you hear they're bad and what's what's really the deal This here? is a real deal of polyunsaturated fat. Why are polyunsaturated fats not found so much in nature? That's the first question I want to ask. And people want to say, oh, there's polyunsaturated fats everywhere. Well, what, what has polyunsaturated fat? Canola, canola oil, corn oil. I had never seen corn oil out there. I see corn, but not corn oil. I've never seen <laughs> soybean oil. I see soybeans. So absolutely, polyunsaturated fats are found in nature very small amount of quantities. The reason is because they're highly or easily oxidized. And when I say oxidized, mean if I have a fat right here and I have this energy hitting it, it will damage that fat and it becomes oxidized. And when it becomes oxidized, it becomes rancid. So it's kind of rancid inside your, inside your body. And that's when you have issues causing heart disease. So don't believe that the polyunsaturated fat is not the condition or the reason, but it can be part of that thing causing heart disease. So Again, and most people buy polyunsaturated fats on containers that are transparent in Costco, in Sam's, huge containers, canola oil, corn oil. They are oxidized because light hits them. Light and polyunsaturated fat do not mix well, so you have to be aware of that. So if I was going to do any polyunsaturated consumption, either it will be fish oils, and I will take my Alpha Omega 3 by Infinity Fitness, but that's the only one I will take. Dark container, dark. Uh, capsules so the sun doesn't damage it, but otherwise I stay away from polyunsaturated fats only during uh, food I'm eating. So I think really the summary there is fish oil is great, the other polyunsaturated fats not so much, and never certainly cook with them. Absolutely. Um, it is wrong when they tell you to cook with canola oil. Never ever use canola oil, soybean oil to cook, ever. Highest concentration of polyunsaturated fat, that's what they said they're better for you, but I will never consume them. Now let me just throw, just through the years I've found some fats that I kind of like, but I want to get your perspective on them. Uh, I want to ask you about red palm oil. I've always, I've read some really cool stuff that it prevented oxidation, specifically LDL oxidation. One of the from highest all vitamin the, E content oil. From, right, from the full spectrum of vitamin E. So mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the deal with red palm oil? It's, Absolutely. Palm oil used to be used all the time to cook. In the theaters in the old days, and that was before even your time, maybe Mary Meadows' time, we used to have in the popcorn area, they used to have this container with red oil. I don't know if you remember that. And you go to a theater and they say, we want popcorn, and they were not the machines. They, they put the, pop, the red thing and they cooked the popcorn in there. Well, that was 
palm or saturated fat. And they said, that's bad for you. Of course, that changed. But that's an absolutely an amazing oil. It has a saturated fat kind of, has high monosaturated fat, also have palmitoleic acid into it. Very rare that you find that. So it is an excellent source of saturated fat and an excellent oil, actually. Yeah, I used to always put a couple of tablespoons on my eggs. Oh yeah, I yeah. remember you used really to funny it. texture if you if you cooked with it. Don't ever do that. I did that one time and it got all bubbly and weird. But another um, another oil, um, sesame oil, seems to be kind of a sesame new, oil really is high fat. monosaturated fats. I think it's like sixty percent poly and forty percent mono, some percent saturated fat. Um, I don't use it to cook. To add to salads, to add to things, yes, but not to cook. Don't use okay. It. Okay. Um, let me see. One more. How about um, how about walnut oil? That seems to be a pretty popular one. Walnut oil is very high on monounsaturated fats, so actually, if you're going to cook in low heat, you can use it. Otherwise, don't use it for high temperatures. If I'm going to use high high heat, always use saturated fat, palm oil, yeah. coconut oil, olive oil can reach some temperatures, but no, stay away from it if you can. All right, there you go. So there's some tips on what kind of fats you want, what you cook with, what you don't cook with. So um, feel free to drop some questions below in the comments. And thanks for watching. Thank you.